Good evening to you. Over the next two nights, we will take an in-depth look. Everything from the inmates' living conditions to an update on why all executions have been stopped. Plus, we will have a timeline of what happens on that final day of life. Tonight, we start with a look back, the history of Arkansas's death penalty. In the 19th century, it was virtually the universal method of execution in the U.S., hanging, often leading to a slow and cruel death, the prisoner's neck broken. It's estimated that's how hundreds of people in Arkansas paid for their crimes of espionage, rape, or murder. To this day, visitors are still drawn to these reconstructed gallows in Fort Smith. Judge Isaac Parker, also known as the hanging judge, handed down their sentences. 79 men lost their lives here. Likely no other place in the city elicited such interest and strong feelings. Back then and today, the method of execution continues to be controversial. The state of Arkansas started keeping track of executions back in 1913. Since then, 196 people have been put to death. 53 of those in the electric chair. 1964, though, saw the state's last electrocution. It'd be 26 more years until another inmate would be put to death. There were several roadblocks, including the U.S. Supreme Court, ruling capital punishment unconstitutional. All scheduled executions across the country were suspended. Department of Corrections spokesperson Dinah Tyler. It'll be here in just a second. Then Governor Rockefeller commuted the sentences of Arkansas's entire death row which at the time consisted of 15 inmates, and they became known as the Rockefeller 15. The death penalty was later reenacted, and in 1983, Arkansas lethal injection became Arkansas's chosen method. I was wrong. Since the state started keeping records, only one woman, though, has been executed. Nurse Christina Riggs, convicted of smothering her two young children to death in 1997. If I'd only reached out and told somebody what I was feeling or thinking, <sighs> I regretted every day that I didn't pick up the phone and call my mama that night and tell her what I was doing. The potassium chloride she used on herself wasn't diluted and never made it to her heart. She confessed to the crime and asked for the death penalty. No matter how you sugarcoat it, no matter she was depressed, she was this, she was that. Doesn't make up for the fact that I took two innocent people's lives that were my babies. Riggs was executed just a few days after this interview in 2000. Today, 40 men sit on Arkansas's death row, waiting for an execution date. But what is life like behind bars? I've seen 27 executions since I've been on the row. How often are visitors allowed and how big is their cell? I am not proud to be here. Tonight on the THV 10 o'clock difference, we've got the answers. I will be the first one to tell you I am very, very ashamed. From death row at Varner Supermax Prison, Ashley Blackstone, today's THV. It's mostly quiet, rural Arkansas in Lincoln County. Lots of farmland and the occasional train. Across the street, though, the peacefulness dissolves into tension, filled with an excruciating weight. I've seen 27 executions since I've been on the road. It's behind these walls, behind the razor wire, where 40 men sit. The oldest, 61, the youngest, 26, all murderers sentenced to die. It has to be hard on them. They have to relive this nightmare every time my name comes up. Don Davis is one of four death row inmates THV has interviewed since 2000. He confessed to killing a 62-year-old woman execution style. The thing I can do is, is, is beg for forgiveness and, 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 and say how sorry I am. And, and I know that's very hollow. Then there's Ricky Dale Newman. He's locked up for the mutilation death of a woman in Van Buren. A human being can adapt to any situation. I'm already adapted. These two men are still waiting, waiting for an execution date. It's like being in absolute terror and being numb at the same time. 
Another, Damian Eccles. He escaped that execution date, the only Arkansas death row inmate to ever be released from prison. He walked free in August after a rare legal maneuver. You know, everything in prison is made out of concrete. And the fourth, Christina Riggs, the only woman ever to be executed in Arkansas since the state started keeping records. I was ashamed. I felt like I had done something to deserve it. And their living conditions, many say, are deserving too. It is what you would think of as a cell block. This is death row. It's three tiers. Department of Corrections spokesperson Dinah Tyler. They're not posh, they're not necessarily the most comfortable like staying in a hotel, but they are definitely humane. And this is the size of their cell. It's 11 by 8, twice the length of my height. I can take about 14 steps from one end to the other. There's a shower and a bed inside and not much else. Being in here is just like being out there, you know. The only difference is you don't get your freedom. To ensure all 1,600 inmates at Varner are served, breakfast on death row is between 2.30 and 4.30 a.m., lunch usually at 9.30, and dinner around 3 p.m. Showers happen every other day, and some kind of light is always on. If you want to sleep all night in the dark, then you don't need to be in prison because we're going to keep some lights on because we have to be able to see. There's a television in their cell with basic channels. It shuts off at 10.30 every night. They can talk on the phone for 15 minutes a day to pre-approved numbers. Inmates can go outside for one hour, five days a week to an enclosed area. They can walk around in circles and stuff and they get fresh air. But we cannot, because of the level of security of these inmates, just let them run around in a rec yard with all the other inmates. We can't. Any sort of energy work, uh, because that's all I have in here. And that's... um. That saved my health. It's kept me alive. Death row inmates can have visitors, but not just anyone can show up unannounced. You must be pre-approved first through the Department of Corrections. Visiting hours are once a week for three hours. You have to be escorted at all times by two officers, two. And the same goes for execution day. But for now, all executions are on hold. Are they not committing the same sin? that the person on the table committed. Don Davis is part of a lawsuit with other death row inmates. Their claim, lethal injection causes too much pain. It's been six years since the last execution. Tomorrow night at six, an update on the lawsuit and how it could potentially change Arkansas's death row. From Varner Supermax Prison, Ashley Blackstone, today's THV. Inside Varner Supermax Prison sit 40 men, described by some as the most dangerous cold-blooded killers in Arkansas. There's Roger Coulter, convicted of raping and murdering his five-year-old niece. Andrew Ingram, who raped and murdered a North Little Rock Mall security guard. And Kenneth Reams, involved in the shooting death of a man at an ATM. They're all on death row, waiting for an execution date. I came to it from a ethical and moral standpoint. I didn't feel the state had the right to kill anybody. And for 20 years, David Rickard has been fighting for the life of every man on death row. As part of the Arkansas coalition to abolish the death penalty, he's been through nearly 20 executions. It's not an easy night. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind, as some wit once said. Then, nine years ago, it became personal. We're very good friends now, and uh, I look forward to my visits on a regular basis. He started a relationship with 36-year-old Reams, the man on death row for 19 years. Once a month, Rickard makes the drive to Varner, a three-hour round trip, and the pair talk for three hours. When I put myself in that same situation, I just, I think I probably would have crumbled. Rickard says Reams is remorseful, but he wants to make it clear he does not agree with Reams's involvement in the crime. Not at all, nor do I condone any of the other crimes that were uh, for which these men are on the row. But many don't agree, arguing convicted murderers like Reams deserve to die. Still, executions likely won't happen in Arkansas anytime soon. They've all been put on hold. Several inmates are part of a lawsuit claiming executions leave too much discretion to prison officials in putting inmates to death. 
UALR law professor Felicia Epps says their argument is a valid one. There could be certain combinations of drugs that inflict some inappropriate level of pain on the person. In August ruling though now prevents that a Pulaski County judge ruled that the catch all phrase chemical or chemicals to be used unconstitutional. Meanwhile, lawyers for the state as well as for the inmates plan to appeal parts of this case before the Arkansas Supreme Court. If societies come to the point to where they want a man to suffer or a woman to suffer before they're dead, before they die, then we've really we've really fallen. Don Davis is part of the lawsuit. THV asked him in 2007 how he'd choose to be executed. You know, I've thought about it. I don't want to be electrocuted. I would be the first one to tell you that seems pretty painful to me. But Department of Corrections spokesperson Dinah Tyler says that is an option. The statutes in Arkansas say that if for any reason lethal injection is declared to be unconstitutional, Arkansas reverts back to electrocution. And Arkansas still has an electric chair that is operational and if need be can be brought back into service. It's a very difficult thought. For Rickard, he knows any method of death is a possibility for his friend Reams and for the others here. Still, he fights. This is what I choose to do. I'm not going to enforce my standards on anybody else. No freedom for the 40 men. The lives of their victims gone. Understanding this issue will always be controversial, dividing people on life or death. Just over the railroad tracks, across from Varner Supermax Prison, is a resting place for hundreds of Arkansans. Buried by family with flowers left as a symbol of love. Gone but not forgotten. But for others, they have no loved ones. At least no one who claimed their body, like Ronald Gene Simmons, a Vietnam vet who killed 14 family members in Pope County in 1987, executed by the state and buried by the state. But long before a burial and execution day is set, most often there are years of mental preparation. Some are ready. I don't care. That's the whole deal. I don't care when they put me to death. Others, hardly. Are you scared? Absolutely, you're scared. It's November 2005, the last execution in Arkansas, the final month of 45-year-old Eric Nance's life, convicted of raping and murdering a Malvern teenager in 1993. Julie Heath's throat slashed with a box cutter, her cousin, Johnny Hood. Julie was just a beautiful girl that always smiled. These weeks, everything from when Nance wakes up to who he calls to what he eats, methodically planned by the Department of Correction. Counseling starts weeks in advance. The inmate learns step by step what will happen on execution day. It's a busy time. As spokesperson Dinah Tyler explains, it's quite the opposite of an inmate's normal day in solitary confinement. And what's fixing to happen is obviously monumental, and they have to be prepared for it emotionally. Prison policies put Nance on death watch days prior. He's watched at all times to ensure he doesn't try to take his own life. His family is allowed extra visits. Prior to the execution, the inmate is transferred from death row here at Varner Supermax to a quiet cell immediately next to the execution chamber at nearby Cummins units. Then the day comes. Family and friends are now restricted. Only a lawyer and a spiritual advisor can meet with Nance in a special visitation room. Around 4 p.m., his final meal is served. Two bacon cheeseburgers, french fries, two pints of chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream, and two Cokes. He has been in relatively good spirits considering the gravity of the situation. It's now 924. The black curtain opens and Nance is lying on a gurney. A white sheet covers him from his neck to his feet. 30 people watch, members of the media, the victim's family, and prison officials. He's given the chance for any last words. No answer. Three people can stop his death, the governor, Department of Correction, director, or a judge. But no call comes. The lethal injection process then starts, injecting a cocktail of drugs into Nance. Six minutes later, the coroner pronounces him dead. I guess it brings closure that he's gone. But, you know, you, we thought that this would, you know, make things better as far as him being gone. That's good. 
This schedule pretty much the same for all inmates on execution day. A difficult time, Dinah Tyler says, for the multiple agencies involved. As for a cost of executions, she says it's a question they often get. We never knew where to draw the line. It, there was never a logical stopping point. Plus, we have been reluctant to figure a cost because how do you put a price tag on a human life? Over the railroad tracks, this cemetery will not be getting an extra grave this day. Nance will be buried elsewhere. But as surely as Arkansas's death row continues, one day another will be added. Ashley Blackstone, today's THB.